This is the Misdirected Mark Podcast, a podcast about gaming, game mastering, and entertaining you, our listeners. We are explicit, you have been warned, and I'd like to thank Mike Willard for letting us use his music at our show. Now let's pick up those mics and get on with this thing. Well, it's a podcast about gaming, game mastering, and entertaining you with Phil, Chris, Bob, who doesn't like PB&J and will be set on fire at $700 in the Patreon. Oh, wait a minute. I totally failed at that opening. Boy, did you. You sure and, did. And not only that, but I failed at putting, for some reason, because I updated OBS today, which is what we use to broadcast this thing, the title of the show isn't on the bottom of the actual stream. So if you're watching this in the stream, it's supposed to say The Many Faces of Failure, 242, but it doesn't. And I'm not because we right failed because we failed at the, at the <laughs> failed opening at that graphics. Too. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> well, my name's Chris. Well, um, mic drop. We out. <laughs> like, that's it. We're done. Show's over, folks. Oh man, going. This is all after show tonight. No, no, it's hey, not. Hey, everybody Uh-oh. records. Nobody quits. Oh, Chris, I just realized something. What? Well, we got these fancy pop filters. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Chris, do you remember how the show ends? There's a mic, a mic drop, and you punch the mic. Yeah. Well, whatever. You'll, you'll figure it out. I'm, we better buy more pop you filters. Get, you're you an get, intelligent man. You'll figure it out. You get two hours to figure out how to do yeah, that, two right? hours to figure out how to solve this problem. <laughs> Damn it. Probably an hour and 15, hour and 45 minutes. No, probably. I can make it two hours. Don't don't hold uh, me back. Jesus. Don't undercut Phil. me, bro. We're Phil. going oh, long. wait, wait. And I'm <laughs> Phil. And I'm old man Logan, and this is a train wreck. As it's intended to be. We call this a hot opening. A hot it's opening. <laughs> hot, hot, hot. Super hot. It, as opposed to the cold opening where we're like, you know, a little stilted and coming in slow. Ooh. No, this thing's just, oh, we're like on fire rolling down a hill. I hope everybody's having a good time tonight. Sounds like we are. Phil, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? What's going, going on? Um, okay. I, I got, I did a shit ton of gaming. Wow. What? All right. So my gaming, like um, my dry spell ended. Friday night, uh, I recorded uh, an episode of Pandas, which dropped. We'll talk feel, about that. At the, do you feel cleansed? I do. I feel cleansed, real, real natural all the way through. Um, so I recorded Pandas, which dropped on Monday. We'll talk about that later um, in the show, mm-hmm. right, when we do the roundup. The podcast, Super Friends. Yes. And then um, Emily is uh, trucking across the U.S. Like, picture the map and like a little, yeah. a little car moving across. the. So Emily is moving across the U.S. So she was unavailable. So... Um, I told Senda, I'm like, hey, we're already recording Friday night. I'll, I'll play a game with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we did. And we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Yes, right? we will. So I did that. Um, then I got to, um, I had to play some swords. Everybody. I had to play some uh, Swords Without Master on Sunday. Okay. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, Saturday, you came over. Oh, that's right. We and played. we did the rom-com episode. Yeah, so the rom-com of a single moment has been recorded. I will be editing that and releasing that to uh, people in the next week or so. Right. I knew there was like three three days of gaming, right? So I did that with you. Sunday, we did... Um, Sunday, we did Swords Without Master. Yes, we did in the that morning. That was excellent with one of the craziest discovery phases that has ever been played. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty crazy discovery phase. By the time it was done, a new god had entered the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. That happened. And, the, and then... The god of uh, desire... Of, of the, granter, the, granter the granter of, of desires. desires. The granter of desires. Yeah. Um, and then I played uh, the indie hack on uh, Sunday night with Bob and Tony. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it was... Yeah interesting it's an interesting game yes it's it's not bad i liked it there are certain things about it that are like oh that's kind of cool and then there are certain things about it that are a little rough yeah there's some things about like simple checks seem overly complicated with that detail system Mm -hmm. um but combat what rolling and assigning tags for wounds and stuff was totally legit Mm -hmm. cool um and then it's just it's a really thin game so is it anything like what i used to do with dungeon world when i added the tags um, you, you know what it's actually like? It's like, it's like, it's like a uh, speed fate. Yeah. <laughs> like speed fate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. It's, it's like, like speed fate where everything, everything, every time you get hit, you get a condition. Oh, it's a condition. Okay. Yeah. The, the tags are conditions. Yep. Yeah. And then you take so many tags, you're dead. Exactly. Yep. I got um, you. But it was fine. Like it played and, um, I, I came up with a really cool little, um, half prepped, half improv adventure. What if one subbed out? I'm just curious. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did you say? <laughs> what if one subbed out? I'm- <laughs> And, and and I know keep your head in the game, everybody. I'm trying. Quick. I'm trying so hard right now to stay with you. <laughs> Sub. If, what if somebody substituted? Substituted. Substituted. Okay. Yep. What if somebody substituted? Yes. 
um, hit points for that tag system for Dungeon World? Um, no, it'll fall apart because the main core mechanic mm -hmm. is uh, you roll 2d6 opposite of each other. So the GM die is the light die and the player die is the dark die. Yeah. You roll them and whichever one's higher, that's who won the challenge. Uh -huh. And then the difference between them determines how many tags. So if you had like if you were rolling for hit points damage, I don't think it would really work. Like sometimes no, 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 you get two tags. No, I meant what if I subbed out the tag system to Dungeon World and got rid of hit points? Oh, um, yeah, actually, that would that, that would work. That I'm would think about that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's interesting because I like the tag system from yep. Worlds in Peril a lot, but I don't figure out a good way to implement it. Um, anyway, yeah, anyway, just you, Chris. So I did a, um, so I did a thing, which I actually, I think I sent it to you and I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but, um, knowing that I was playing with Bob and, um, Tony, I wanted to have an adventure prepped, but I didn't really want to know too much about it. Uh -huh. So I wrote this like interesting, I just wrote this skeleton yeah, and actually yeah. I, I borrowed this, um, dungeon world adventure generator. And I wish I could remember um, the person who sent me the link, but it was really good. I got it from somebody who was listening to pandas and uh, it gives you like two sentences. Like we are going to a um, water logged crypt to find the hero, like, you know, of a long lost hero kind of thing. I used those two sentences made up like five scenes, right? Five, five room dungeon. Yep. But I didn't put any details of the, what the whys and the hows. you asked the players. And I, right before the game, I just asked Tony and Bob, I'm like, who is the hero that's that's buried in the crypt? Oh, that's cool. What is rumored to be in the crypt and who's trying to get into the crypt? And like I asked all those questions and then um, just mixed that in with the skeleton prep I did. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. Like it was it was super easy. Like I had yep. just enough prepped to run, but enough improvised that it was totally our um, yep. evening of play. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah, I kind of want to do something with that a little more i think there's i think there's a thing that's why i want you to look at it because i think there's when i say that that means i think there's a thing where encoded could do something it's actually on the docket for me to look at tomorrow along with the legacy weapon awesome there awesome awesome go. okay good so i did that and um yeah i wanted i just i wanted to play the indie hack and i got it off my list nice so there you go uh check and good and reflections showed I got, up i got my reflections books and characters i did as well and they looks fantastic it really does the book it's is really nice, nice. Very it's nice. um it's it's licked but i i've heard it's licked but i don't have proof like senda got um like her book licked because that <laughs> picture in the one that emily um posted on twitter yeah that is senda's book oh that's neat yeah um i hear rumors that my apocalypse world second edition book is in transit Ooh. Shiny. And I am two days out from my fidget cube arriving. I hate nice. you. Very nice. I will be bringing it on the show. That's it, awesome. It's got the silent part. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, that's enough. Uh, me, Robert. Hey, um, I did uh, a bunch of gaming as well. Um, some of it with you. Imagine how that happened. Sunday Swords, which was such a good time, but so many stymies. Stymies and <laughs> mysteries. Stymies. And oh, boy. Oh, it was crazy. But that, that was like a perilous discovery phase. <laughs> the discovery phase was more perilous than the perilous phase we had right before it. That's uh, really yeah. true. It was yeah. funny. Um, but good stuff. Good stuff all around. Um, and then uh, that evening, of course, the, um, the uh, Indie Hack, which was uh, explained in detail. So that's, that's good. Um, and then after we finished Indie Hack, um, yeah, you're good. After we finished Indie Hack, uh, we introduced Tony to Circle of Six. Oh, because right. he'd been hearing about it, and uh, and yeah. we hadn't had a chance to play with him yet. So we played it with him, and he's like, "Yeah, that's totally a game. It's so. it's totally it's totally <laughs> a game. It's really good." So now I'm at the point where I'm chomping at the chomping at the bit for uh, Tim and John to have some free time for me to go. Hey, let's tweak some some layout and and make it pretty because because I want to make it pretty now. <laughs> Well, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you do too, but no, I mean, I mean, I'm very excited and we have our encoded, um, we have our encoded board meeting this Saturday. Yep. Yes, we do. And that's going to be <laughs> a good board <laughs> meeting. Remind me off the mics. We have to talk about how to get there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that should be a thing. Yeah. yeah we should be do thing. that. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, um, I have been doing the work and oh, I did my year end accounting thing. So that was, you know, going over all my stuff from PayPal for the year and, uh, so, uh, 
you know, good times, man. Good I have times. challenged us to release no less than 12 products this year. Yeah, there you go. Yes, well, we're going to be doing uh, goals for next year. What about you, Chris? Uh, so I've been getting ready for our meeting, putting lots and lots of stuff on the agenda, for at least in the ideas for the agenda for Phil to figure out. How to, like, we need to talk about all of these things. I've been trying to figure out how to bring in guests to the show live. Uh, I used my first attempt today. It did not work as well as I was hoping it would work. Uh, we're still working out some technical difficulties. I have a $250 solution that I'm not purchasing. Uh, I think that is legitimate. Yeah. How about we just don't have guests for a while? Yeah, I'm working on it, but I have to because I've already scheduled a guest to be on the show. Well, now look what you've done. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I have a way to do it. It's not that big a deal. Would you call that premature invitation? Yeah, I don't really care. That just means I have a deadline uh, for that. Jim McClure is coming on the show in the future. Awesome. I believe episode 249. I don't know Maybe if this, I don't know if this show can handle two men as impeccably dressed as both McClure and I in one show. I mean, we can do it. We will fit somehow both McClure and I. <laughs> uh, I'm going to I'm going to as a special wear a black polo. I I like I never wear one. I'm going to wear a black polo for McClure's uh, for McClure's arrival. That's nice. That sounds really really cool. And it'll be very black and very standardized. Yes. Well. That's McClure and I. I've been doing a bunch of uh, marketing stuff for Baldwin Games. You can see me twittering all over the place with the uh, Baldwin Games lo uh, thing. And also, uh, there's a G Plus community. If you're interested in the Baldwin Games stuff, you can go join that G Plus community. And that's where there's you can talk in more than 140 characters. Also, Winter Fantasy is coming, so I've been you know working on promoting that also. We nice. played like we already mentioned the rom com, the, the sort of thought master. Uh, I've been learning how to make maps, and I've been taking a Photoshop class. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's fun. Yeah, compositing is a thing, and Masks uh, are a thing in masks, Photoshop, too. Masks, layers. Layers. Layers is something that I understood for a long time. Yeah. Masks is something that I didn't have access to in some of the other programs that I used. I'm like two seconds from breaking out from the theme song for Masks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you remember that uh, t that cartoon? Masks? Oh, my God. Which Masks? Was that one of those animated ones with all the like vehicles and stuff? Oh, yes. It was the one with the vehicles. I'm literally alone here on masks. Yeah. Where the, the, the dudes with the masks and the cars that transform. Never watched no, it. Seriously, never watched the chat, that. somebody in that chat room. I was probably working. <laughs> yeah, you're too old and apparently you're too young. Apparently. And I, in this case, am, I, in this case, in, in the sweet the spot, just right on that one. <laughs> Chris, okay. uh, masks was a show in the seventies. Apparently. No, it was that seventies. It was eighties. <laughs> I there, was... see the chat room. The chat room just jumped in. Oh, good. Thanks, chat room. It was an acronym. Thank oh, you. It was okay. That's why. Thank God. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Uh, oh, I finished a D and D adventure today for Baldwin Games. Then I can now work on other things. Nice. So nice, nice. A couple of announcements before we move on. The mega feed is going away. Warning, warning. The mega feed is going away. Evacuate the mega feed. You have three weeks to evacuate the mega feed. I am trying to figure out how this OML file that I'm trying to make, which has all of our shows on it, works. Uh -huh. It's I haven't, I haven't quite figured it out yet because I'm not a programmer. So if anybody out there uh, wants to give me a hand with that, I'd so it. So it's, um, it's a file, yeah. but is it just like a quasi-text like some sort of thing? It's like some sort of XML kind of thing. Kind of like an XML, yeah, kind of XML kind of thing? I think it's an XML container. Uh, that's okay, I can shoot, shoot, shoot it over to me. Sure. And I can help look at it with you because I've seen some of that stuff. No problem. And I can parse. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for everybody out there. It's just I'm having a hard time with it myself. And the last thing again, and this might be the last time that I mentioned this because you should all know by now, uh, the Twitter is shared. If you haven't seen, send up tweets now on the Misdirected Mark Twitter. Yeah. Twitter. Twitter. And if you saw her on the Dr. Tom the Frog show, uh, she mentioned that she is a, uh, and which is completely true, that she is the, the co-runner of Misdirected Mark Productions. So she has uh, all of the power. Yeah. She has all of the passwords. As she mentioned to me, passwords are power. All right. Are we moving forward now on with the show? Let's do the thing. Do it. All right. To do it. Feature segment. Get to the chopper. Which, by the way, I'm, I'm working on a script and getting a new bumper for this now. Which That's is what we should have. Get to the chopper. Get to the cho No, let's not. <laughs> Welcome to the workshop, where we try to build better games. So if you didn't notice, we're talking about failure. We, we're, we may have talked about damn, failure. We're doing a damn good job of yeah, it. Yeah, we, we, uh, we've talked, we've, I think we've talked about failure before, but it's been a while, like a very long while. 
long enough that I didn't remember we did the topic. I don't even know if you were on the show. I don't did. remember you guys doing failure since I've been here. Listen, so that's listen, you can't be that far. Away if from it the predates my arrival on the show, it's like it didn't even happen. Yeah, you need to be closer to the microphone than that. If it predates me not being on the show, it's like it didn't even happen. It's true. It's kind of true. It's, if it predates 161 or 169, then it's like it didn't even happen. Right. Whatever number it is, you, I said your words. This pop filter is making like there's a lot of shit going on now. Like the pop filter, my my tea. I'm working on it. I'm working through this. You know what I haven't heard? Heavy breathing. That's Everson, man. Now That's I'm not hearing me. it. That's not me. That's Everson. You know what problem. else I'm also hearing? What? No. <laughs> there. You like that? We have new pop filters, everybody. By the way, I pop bought them. Filter. I bought them for us. We'll get used to it. Yes. You know what I want? Change we fear change. Can can we later get them with like a misdirected mark logo? Yeah, I'll just have somebody screen paint them on. Oh, that'd be so bad. That'd be fine. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if Tim could do like some iron on thing with a graphic from the shop. Yeah, as long as it doesn't interfere with the voice going through it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, you'd have to screen just print. Soli- just solidifies it. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like talking through a piece of paper. <laughs> Enhance failing. Fail. <sighs> All right. So okay. We, failing. We started. We uh, Mr. to mark word scramble. We started talking about failing last week on the show. We did. Yeah. Yes. And now we're going to talk about failing this week on the show. And we're just, we're not only going to talk about it, we're going we to continually do it. We were apparently going to demonstrate it yes. all. I think so we're going to hammer this point home, kids. Would you please define failure for me, Phil, since that's what you were so good at and you hardly ever fail at doing it. Oh, see how you did that? Okay. Um, failure, man. Uh, being unsuccessful, falling short, right? Like, I mean, it's hard to define it you know in too many different ways that is very accurate you didn't do the thing you were trying to do correct okay so what about failure in games like uh, one of the biggest complaints i've seen about games or at least game mastering things like that or how games work mechanically is that a lot of people assume failure is a binary set of circumstances yeah i mean you know we often um in terms of having uh dice you know randomizers cards things like that um you know we have a lot of examples where uh we have pass fail right yes so attack rolls hit miss um skill checks in mm-hmm. a lot of systems not all skill checks are pass fail yeah they are um and that's the kind of um especially like for me having grown up in the um in the old days of gaming in the 80s in the 80s um in the <laughs> you know beginning days um binary failure was binary pass fail was pretty much the norm right like you made your saving throw or you didn't Yep. Like, you you've been playing some old school. Or you died. Right. You picked yeah. a lock or you didn't. Right. It, it's very much um, yes, no, pass, fail. Um, no. No, there were other mechanics that enhanced that kind of play back then because when it came to old school dungeon crawls and old school D&D, the turn system was a thing. So you had torches burning down constantly. Yep. Keeping track of time mattered a lot more than some of the sto- more story oriented play that we engage in today. Yeah. You also had, um, I mean, not to get wildly off, off tangent here, but you also didn't have skills. So you didn't have skill checks. You had to say the things you were doing. That is also true. Although that is, that is a strange, um, I, I agree with you in a lot of ways, but there was also a lot of like, you r- roll to see if you do the thing that you're trying to do. Because based on the based on your six stats, yeah, I mean, you just you you didn't have skills. So you had stat saving throw. Yeah, that was it. You you described a lot more. You didn't rely on your skills to tell you what you couldn't couldn't do. Right, like if like if I was jamming that old school stuff, it would be you know, you would say I searched the room, but I would say like how yeah. do you search? I pull the out room? my ten foot pole and start tapping at the walls. Yeah, because if I, you just yeah, I start rubbing my running my hands across it, or I just I just look. I'm I'm just inspecting I, I, I visually blow chalk across blow, the yeah, floor, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so. But again, a lot of a lot of pass fail, a lot of this binary um, system. Now, the thing about that is it's kind of boring. It can be right. It can it can be kind of boring if it's if it's the primary mechanic that you have. It's kind of boring. Right. So so failure um, can be a lot cooler than that. It sure can. So um, we can kind of now take a look at like what are like let's crack open failure and kind of see what we can do with it. So what are some of the different types of failure then? All right. So we can have like immediate failure, Mm -hmm. right? Like our failure happens right at that moment. You do not hit the thing with your sword. You for, you do not pick the lock. You try to jump across the chasm and you do not make it all the way. You fall. Right. Um, you can have off screen failure. Yes, you can. So that's a failure where the consequence of failure is happened somewhere where the players can't directly see it. For uh, are we doing an example now? By all means, sure. So you are trying to sneak past the guards, right? Yep. And you sneak, 
and you failed the roll, but those guards didn't notice you, but somebody in the tower did. Sure. Um, you fail to pick you. Um, you fail to spot the trap. You step on a pressure plate, but it opens a it opens a uh, cage down in the, like further in the dungeon <laughs> yeah. and lets something loose. Yep. Yeah. I think I had one once that you stepped on the pressure plate, and um, gelatinous cubes dropped from the ceiling <laughs> to surround you. Yeah. Like you, and the place was like a maze, so yeah. like you were trapped in this maze with like these gelatinous cubes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we have, so that's off screen. I now know why the glittering caves uh, infuriate you so much. Oh, because yes. Me using your own trick against I you. I loathe, I loathe gelatinous cubes. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then we have like indirect failure. So, um, indirect failure is something fails, uh, but we don't find out about it till way later. Hey man, I know when this happened to me, we were playing this L hall game. And I failed a roll to learn about some uh, some character, a princess. Oh. And then I found out later that she had turned into a demon. That's right. Way later. Way later. Which, yeah. at that point, if we would have known that then, we would never have went to that place. Yeah, exactly. Called, um, I got blindsided so hard, it was awesome. That's right. I forgot about that story. Like, you were so, you were so pleased you got blindsided that hard. Yes. It doesn't happen very often. Yeah, that's it. You were, you actually congratulated me on, like, totally blindsiding you. Um... Yeah, I mean, the other example I put there is like Spider-Man, Spider-Man does, fails to stop the robber. And Uncle Ben gets <laughs> and shot. Uncle Ben gets killed. It's yeah. the ultimate failure. Right. Like, that's a, it's a, so. A, Great in, responsibility, Peter. Right. Indirect, indirect failure is consequences. Mm -hmm. Right. Consequences, there are consequences for your action. You may just not see them right away. Um, and what that does is that it allows you as a GM to, um, you don't have to put failure right into action. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Cause you can do your indirect failure. I'm sorry, your, your immediate failure, but you will now also have the option to, um, to move it off screen or even delay it longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it gives you some options for when you want to bring the consequence of that failure. Are you hinting that there's a now spectrum of failure? I'm, I'm definitely going to say there's a spectrum of failure. I, I'm going to say continuum of failure, a continuum of failure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's um so there's so there's also severity, right? Yes. Yes. Cuz because you can have a thing like a minor setback. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um you fail to pick the lock. Mm -hmm. You may pick it again next turn. Yep, and mechanically that stuff either happens based on um how how poorly or like uh what do they call it the level of failure uh, level of success levels yeah. levels of failure and success. You could have that in your game or it could just be based on the situation at hand. Exactly. So you can have like a minor setback, like you did not pick this lock this turn, but you may pick it next turn. Yeah. Um, you can have like a more mid range failure where um, you not only didn't pick the lock, uh, but now uh, the lock is broken. You can't pick it again. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to have to kick down the door. Yep. And uh, then you can have like catastrophic failure. Like you failed to pick the lock and you've activated the gas trap. Yes. In the room. And now the room is filling up with chlorine gas. Mm -hmm. um, so you so you have. So we have a, um, a different temporal occurrence of failure and we have levels of uh, severity. Yes. Okay. Uh, so go ahead. If we're going to understand failure, I guess the first thing we need to do is figure out what it means to succeed. Uh, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. We, um, we can't really understand failure. Failure is to fall short or to, um, like I said, uh, be unsuccessful or fall short. So, in that we need to understand success mm -hmm. in order to find failure. Yes. So how do we do that? Hmm. What does it mean to succeed? So yes, we need to, we need to understand uh, what success looks like in a game and we need to be, um, depending on how, how much you want to play with this mechanic in your game, it depends on how clear you need to be about, your what success looks like yeah because some games get closer to being very procedural like when you do x y is going to happen yeah where but other games leave that uh more up to the game master and the players to figure out yeah absolutely so um so we so we need to understand that and so we need to understand success first and sometimes that means that we really need to get into uh the full intent of what the players think. Not only that, but the full intent of what the game is intending for the mechanics. Yeah. So both, I mean, we have to both we, of those things. Yeah. We have to kind of, we have to marry both those things, mm -hmm. right? They have to kind of come together. Yep. Um, I, and I like this because sometimes players 
and I'm guilty of this as well as a player. Sometimes players will just say something like, I'm going to pick that lock. Mm -hmm. But what they're not saying is there's actually a lot more they're saying about um, what it means to pick that lock. Well, there's also like whatever the con. Yeah, there is a lot because everything that happened before that leads up to that moment. Right. And like, it's all context for what's going on right in that moment. Right. So like some things that are implied are I picked the lock quietly. Mm -hmm. I picked the lock without leaving evidence. That mm -hmm. I picked the lock. I picked the lock without breaking the lock. I picked the lock quickly. I picked the lock. Because we're being chased. Right. I picked the lock quickly. So just saying I picked the lock. Now, a lot of times as a GM, we just understand what that means. And we just tell the player, go ahead and roll. Yep. But sometimes it's worth stopping and asking the player, like, what it like, what does, what is, what is the success you're actually going for here? Mm -hmm. And even if you have to poke at it with like one or two questions. Now, I don't do that for like every skill check. But for like the important ones or the dramatic ones, like it's worth stopping and uh, framing this out a little more. And often you don't need to, because if you have a solid context for what's going on, you can make some inferences that make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So you can. Yeah, absolutely. You can infer this. You can also ask the player. And sometimes you, you should you should actually use both at times, depending on what's going on. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you can just prompt the player. Right. Like I assume you want, I assume, you know, you care about not breaking this lock. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that kind of thing. Okay. And sometimes they'll be like, no, I don't give a shit. Like we can leave whatever evidence, you know? Yeah. We yeah. don't care. Okay. So once we understand success. Oh. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Once we understand that success, now we can look at failure in that term of falling short. Mm -hmm. And the more we understand about that context, the more we can place where we fell short. Yes. Okay. So let's do the, I mean, I learned this. The first time I learned this was from burning wheel. Yeah. Uh, tell the story. Okay. So uh, burning wheel has an example in it. I don't know if it's still in the current version, but it was in the version that I, that I um, originally read the burning wheel. Yes. Um, the most daunting of all role playing games. It feels like the most daunting of all role playing games as a side. It requires a level of time and mastery that I know I can't provide in my life. So it is the Everest of games. We should just ask. No, one day, one day I'm going to turn to you and tell you it's time for us to play this game. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Austin Lemke, come teach us how to play Burning Wheel. There we go. Because yeah. he's been playing it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the, the example in Burning Wheel is player snuck into a guarded fortress, is in a hallway, picking the lock on the door as a security patrol is making its rounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we look at it simply, picking the lock is the binary, right? Did you yes. pick the lock? Did you not pick the lock? Mm -hmm. But to understand that in a greater context and the idea of stakes, right? Like we're kind of talking about stakes here. Um, we want to pick the lock before the patrol finds them without leaving evidence. Yes. Okay. So now with that much larger context, our falling short doesn't have to be about the lock. Do you, know, is, do you yeah, understand absolutely. what I'm saying? Our falling short could be leaving evidence. Our falling short at that point could be we don't pick the lock and the guard patrol is about to come around the corner. Our, it could be you just pick the lock as the guard patrol comes around the corner. That too. Right? Like maybe now the next step in that scene is to get around the door and lock it before the patrol kicks kills it. you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so once we know what that is, we can shift that falling short over different parts of it. And when we do we get different things. Yeah. Because to, uh, to go back to this example for a second, because we have a greater context, we have a broader spectrum of failure, which is what we mentioned before. Exactly. That is the thing about like that, in, that situation there isn't about picking the lock, right? That situation there. I mean, it is partly about that, but it's about really sneaking around this place quietly. Yeah. So let's, I mean, so let me, let me also, cause I, I don't even have this in the notes, but it just kind of came, came to me. Failing to pick the lock itself is an immediate failure. Yes. Okay. You try to pick the lock. Doesn't. Okay. Failing to pick the lock before the guard, as the guard patrol rounds the corner, that is more of um, the off screen. Mm -hmm. Like you can hear them. Um, the picking the lock and leaving evidence and leaving evidence is the off screen. Yes. Right. Because then what happens is later in the, um, for, for what people, uh, it was the indirect failure. Yeah. You actually managed to pick the lock. Uh, well, cause we're talking about failure. I'm talking about failing forward right now. Right. Not yet. So you failed to pick the lock at, and the guard patrol comes around the corner. Like, yeah, you didn't actually pick the lock or you're getting close to it. And the guards are coming around the corner. Right. So, yeah, I mean, each one of those. So with the one with leaving evidence, um, 
you fail to pick the lock. Let's say you go and hide. Uh, you've left now scratch marks all over. Uh, you left scratch marks on the thing. Mm -hmm. I can now later in a scene have more guards come running down the hall because they're clearly suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that that kind of, you kind of get that right. It covers it. Yeah. Very well. Okay. So um, are we going to talk about failing forward now? I, I don't see how we, um, I don't see how we can talk about failure um, and not at least uh, mention failing forward for a second. Yeah, because, because failing forward isn't actually failing. <laughs> right. Failing forward is actually a, a tool for um, propelling the game forward yeah. where a traditional failure would just stymie the game completely. Yeah. The most, uh, the most re recognized form of this is actually success with a complication. Yes. From fate. You su Yes. Or from everywhere pretty much at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it explicitly written like that in fate. Yes. Uh, so you succeed at what you were doing, but some unintended consequence occurs from that. And it could be any of those things that we talked about before. So for instance, if I'm, if I'm running fate and you are trying to uh, use physique to bash in a door, uh -huh. okay. And you fail. And I say, uh, you can bash in the store, but with a major consequence. Yeah. So I bash in the door, but I uh, take the six point consequence because I separate my shoulder. Oh, yikes. Okay. That was harsh. I was going to do one funnier, but okay. Um, you bash in the door only to find the guards are having an illegal poker game or craps game on the other side of the door. See, I would call that a minor consequence. Minor? Really? Because I have you outnumbered and gunned. In yeah, but I'm not hurt. You stumble into the middle of it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not hurt. Interesting. Like, I didn't lose any resources. Okay. Fair enough. That's actually from me reading about other, uh, I was reading the Dresden files accelerated and they talk about stuff like Interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yes, that's fail forward, right? Like that's the thing. Like the door opened, the door opened, but dot, dot, dot. Yep. Here, I'll, uh, I'll frame it this way too. Um, bashing through the door into the, into the room of guards who are having the illegal poker game is a soft move. Bashing through the door and separating your shoulders is a hard move. Sure. Take damage. Yep. As opposed to, uh, as opposed to setting yourself up to possibly take damage. Right. Yeah. So that's the dungeon. That's your dungeon world. Take damage there. versus introduce a complication. Correct. Or lose a resource. Lose a resource. As opposed yeah. to introduce a complication. Yep. Okay. So, um, so failing forward's a thing. And the, the thing about failing forward is that it's not exactly a failure. No, it's not. Right. It's designed to keep things moving forward. Uh huh. Okay. Um, but it's worth mentioning because it's got the word failing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a bunch of games have it these days. Like even fifth edition D&D &D has it. Oh yeah. Fifth edition D&D &D, fate dungeon world. The hard, I mean the hard move is not specifically a fail forward, but it opens the possibility for creating well, fail. The forward. seven to nine is a fail forward. Absolutely. That Absolutely. Is, the that intermediate. Is, that is success with the complication. Yes. So why don't we talk about tools of failure? So these are actually fail, not fail forward. For yeah, the yeah, part, these are fail. fail. Right. So what are the things that we can do with failure? Yeah, so, um, you know, if if we look at, for instance, the classic uh, improv move, yes and, uh -huh. um, we can use some different conjunctions to frame failures. Yes, so we're actually not using yes and because you don't actually get the thing. Right, because yes would be you you succeeded, yeah. so. Yes and is actually the classic for fail forward. Yes, it, yes, and uh, what I was going to say. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anyway, I like um, Daniel Solis had this Kickstarter a couple of years ago for these things called writer's dice, uh -huh. which are just um, two dice with conjunctions on them. Oh, God, I got to do it. Conjunction, conjunction what's, what's your function? Hooking up phrases and nouns. Words and phrases. Words and, and phrases clauses. and clauses. I'm going to do everything for you. You, you, you literally <laughs> do. I think he failed at that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Where is the thing? Do you have that? <laughs> that was terrible. Oh, boy. All right. Anyway, yes. Conjunction Junction. Um, oh, send a schoolhouse rock. <laughs> she knows you can't make the same joke at her three times. Did I do that one already? Yes. On Pandas Talking Games. Damn it. It was late because you sang it on Pandas Talking Games in like episode like 12. Oh, 12? Never yeah. mind. That's like that show. That's like last year. <laughs> sort of. That's like spring. It's like 30 weeks ago. Okay. 30 Moving weeks on. Ago. Tools of failure. Okay. Tools of failure. Anyway, Daniel Solis is uh, writer's dice. Um, they're these fantastic dice with, um, with conjunctions on them. And uh, you actually roll them. And then like you get like yes and or yes or that kind of thing. Um, and they're just like fun little improv-y kind of uh, yeah, yeah. dice. Uh -huh. All right. So anyway, um, I, I liked it because... Um, it had a bunch of these 
um, listed. And I just thought we'd, we'd kind of um, just run through them. So yeah, uh, failure, but. So that's uh, something didn't work, but something else good may have occurred. Right. So, so you failed, but. Here's the thing. The, you failed, but uh, the guards went the other down the other hallway. Yeah. You okay. hold your breath. Really oh, I shouldn't fine. even do that because we're actually going to do these uh, for I'll fun. have some examples. Okay. So, yeah, we'll do some examples at the end. Uh, failure and. It didn't work and something else happens. It doesn't specify whether that's good or bad. It's just something else happens. Yep. Uh, failure. So. It didn't work and then there's some long term consequence. So you didn't do the thing. So a thing happens. Right. Uh, failure or. Uh, it didn't work, and there's some option for what else could go wrong. So this isn't immediate, but you have just set yourself up for something else bad that could possibly happen. So not only do you not have the thing that you're trying to do, but something else bad is about to happen. And failure as. It didn't work, and something else happens at the exact same time, which can be neither good nor bad. It could be anything, really. Yeah. Uh, that So it is neutral. Yeah. Okay. And since some of these fall in the same category, yeah, or similar categories, but they're all distinctly uh, a little different yeah and they all function a different way and we'll actually do it at at the end of this segment because we're going to do um a little example and actually run through all of those right okay so let's take a moment and see what's going on in the chat room for life oh well part of us are um picking on phil for um being old Uh, mostly senda which i think is is i mean you can but bob's here so sup queenie how's it going (laughs) queenie Sup. Nice. Paul comes run through the checklist. Number one, make fun of uh, of Senda's age. Yeah. Mm. Number two, old jokes at DNA Phil and Bob's expenses. Okay. Yep. Uh, number three, we're going long. Number yep. four, Mr. misdirected Mark word scramble. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at, well, well. And number five, out of context theater quote. So we can, we need to get one of those. What oh, is, we don't have one yet. Don't worry. I'm still here. I'm still here. Is the thing moving over there? Is what thing <laughs> is moving the over thing there? Moving. No, That's what at, she said. Look at the zoom. Oh, it did kind of fall it over. It did. Chris like pulled on the zoom. My bad. Yeah, don't don't it's break fine. the zoom. It's still running. Well, I, I it's, it's, nobody it's, knows. It's like the you zoom, failed again. The zoom is our recorder, and it records the show that you all hear. So the people in the chat room are just getting the live stream, which is off the mono. The, the show is off the main, which is our the better sounding show. Yeah, sorry, I didn't want the zoom to fall over and something to happen because that's the episode. Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. If the thing fell over, I mean. I can go and grab it. Oh, oh. See, Bob failed. He was trying to do a sound effect. He sure was. Very nice. You know we have to pay uh, gaming and BS when we do <laughs> yeah, that, right? Bro. Don't they have to pay, like, whatever. the Price is Right or uh, Wheel of Fortune? No, <laughs> Price is Right. Price is Right, yeah. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of free apps that do that, so. Oh, well, Anywho. never mind. I bet they're all legal. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so, uh, chat room, hi. Hello. Anything else in the chat room? Or are we good? Um, I think we're good for now. Yeah. That's... See, when we do the episodes with the words climax, they go crazy. We do one about failure. They're all just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whatever. No, it's fine. It's just, you know, there are certain episodes that are more triggery to them. That's true. We get them a little more fired I up. I thought maybe when I said sub earlier, <laughs> <laughs> not that I was doing it on purpose, but. Sure. No. So let's talk about making failure work in your games. Yeah, let's do it. So as far as story structure goes. Failure is very important because most stories are built on that try-fail cycle. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, you love failure in stories. I do. Yeah. I know you do. I, I mean, mean, I do too, but um, I mean, I, you love it because failure is what leads to hard choices. You know what the hardest thing that, that I've seen to write in storytelling, though, is is writing failure where the protagonist isn't completely hamstringed and the antagonist completely wins. Yeah, that's where I like... Um, that's where I like the... Um, indirect Uh because because immediate failures tend to get um, characters into a lot of trouble but yeah if that's why when um, games are about dying in dungeons failure is a much more permanent problematic thing and those characters don't have very long lives that is a that is is a thing that I've noticed but when it comes to more story oriented games where the story isn't emergent but it's like uh, they're storytelling games Understanding the stakes, like we talked about before, and the intent of what's going on in that situation makes it a lot easier to play uh, a story that that functions more like uh, the things that we read and watch on TV. Yeah. I mean, depending on the game, depending on the game system, what you can do with failure is um, you have more options. Like Depends on the focus of the game. Right. But like, for instance, like using an immediate failure in Pathfinder 
is it can be fairly dangerous. Yeah. Where using an immediate failure, i.e. a hard move in um, Dungeon World, uh, I have a lot more options. Mm-hmm. And this isn't this isn't a commentary on those games. It's just that some games handle this better than others. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they're designed to. Yeah. I mean, some I mean, designers sometimes uh, design in failure as part of the game system. Uh, this spectrum of failure. Yes. It's really that spectrum that you're talking about. Some failure, some, some games design it to be very narrow. Some games design it to be very much broader. Yeah, absolutely. So that, I mean, that's important. It's um, very important to understand that. It's actually one of the reasons I love playing powered by the apocalypse games, because the way that failure is handled in the game to me is far more interesting. Like for instance, <laughs> so for instance, um, I have a friend of mine, a mutual friend of Bob and mine, uh, who ran a Pathfinder campaign for us for a while. Mm-hmm. And um, to no fault of his own, he's um, he's running a published adventure. Sure. OK. And we are breaking into this keep. And we must have tried to break down like seven doors. And like I would roll to break down the door and fail. And it would literally be like nothing happened. Nothing happened. Roll again. Nothing happened. Roll again. OK, break into the door. Uh, nothing's in there. And it just happened like that from stock room to stock room. And it was just like, as an aside, why are we rolling? And that's yeah. that's that's yeah. its own thing about when to make oh, pin uh, skill checks and when, when to use when them. to engage the mechanics. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. really the, the pin that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, when to engage mechanics. Um, so yeah, there was that problem, but on the other side of it, nothing happened for trying to break down the doors. Yeah. That's, that's a thing, right? Like, and, and that's nothing on the game master who ran it and nothing uh, specifically about Pathfinder. It's just that Pathfinder does not have what happens after now. And we've talked about this in, uh, on other episodes. I can GM over that yeah, and do stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Right. I don't think there's anything in, in the rule set or even in the advice of the rule set. Maybe now later, because there's, you know, tens of thousands of pages of Pathfinder material yes. out there that it says to not do that. But at least as far as I can remember in the core book, it doesn't say anything about Correct. how to yep. deal with that situation. So for me, like the reason I like Powered by the Apocalypse games is that when in Dungeon World, if we play that same scenario in Dungeon World and I hard fail on trying to break down that door. Right. Like I like I just fail six minus something's going to happen. I'm making a move. Right. Like I have woken something up. Yep. Um, or uh, you went through the door and separated your shoulder. Yeah. Um, you know, any any number of things could possibly happen. And for me as so for me on the player side of that, um, that night breaking down the door, trying to break down the door and failed just kind of sucked yeah, all because night. What's the point? Well, what's the point? And I'm sucking at this role. Uh-huh. So this game sucks, right? Like I was just annoyed. So can I, can I say a few things about that? Uh, yeah. That mechanic of not breaking down the door and time passing works if time matters. Correct. But time didn't matter in this case. No, not so much. Um, that is, that is the thing. Like it's, it's all about how the mechanics surround the idea of failure. Yeah. And it's, it's also again, framing that success, right? Like you need to get through this, you need to get through this keep before sunrise. Sure. So if there's a time ticker and yeah. they're ticking off time and he's not just playing at the speed of plot, then it's a game. Right. Right. Then, right. The dice rolls, the die rolls matter a lot. A- absolutely. At that point. And the game is actually a lot more tense and fun. Like every time you fail, you're like, oh God, I failed again. We ran out right. of t- more time. Tick. Another tick. Yeah. Right. It's like dangerous space jail. Like if yeah. the ticks are mechanically important, then that timer matters a lot more. Right. And now you're looking at the timer like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's an actual real fail state. Yeah. So that's, um, so in, in Apocalypse World games, Power by the Apocalypse games, that move, the hard move, it's interesting as a player. It's because it's flexible. Right. And it's interesting as the GM because the GM has to now look at the context of the situation. And, and use that to make the flexible choice about what move to make. Right. And, and as a GM, I love that. Yeah, me too. Right. Like that's, that's so much fun yeah. to be like, okay, let's see, you're trying to break down the door. Um, that didn't work. Um, uh, you um, oh you break down the door. There's no floor mm-hmm. in the storeroom, and uh, you fall down into a pit. Yeah, that's that's a good one, right? right? Like, like that, that would be a good one for the Pathfinder uh, scenario sure. too. If if that was there, like if you pass, you 
don't fall through the hole when you break down the door. If you fail, you go through the door and fall through the hole. Like that. That's fun. That's yes. Cause something happened. That's the thing. Yeah. That's where, where failure sucks is when nothing in the story happens. And, and honestly, you find another empty room. Yeah. That's pretty much. <sighs> well, that's the skill check problem. Yeah. The, you fail to open the door and then literally there's nothing else to say. Like you fail to open the door. What do you do in next turn? Yeah. Like, cause, cause nothing happened because like, nothing cause happened. Time passing didn't matter. All that stuff that we just talked about. And that's, that's pretty much, um, for design and for game mastering. That's, that's kind of one one stuff that you should all know. Like if this is the first time you're hearing about it, good. Cause it's a thing to have in your toolkit. Like know that things should keep happening. Cause that is the death of fiction. That is the death of role playing games is when you do something and nothing happens because it's a beat. It's a story beat where it was just blah. Like there wasn't, there wasn't character moment. There wasn't anything. There just wasn't anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's like dead air on radio. And I think that's one of those reasons why I was instantly drawn to powered by the apocalypse. Cause it's suddenly like failure is awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, is there anything Good. else about talking about failure, making failure work in your games? Um, so we talked about stymie. We talked about, um, we talked about the spectrum, like right. well, and, we, and we understanding should, if your game has the spectrum or right. not. We should change, like you should change it up. Don't like, move along that spectrum don't it's it's almost like story beats yeah, if you can if your game allows for it. if your game allows for it move across that spectrum don't always have like minor setbacks or don't always have them be intermediate like move around mm -hmm. you know because it makes it unpredictable yes and, and also use them in context of the uh where the story is in its pace yeah i mean and sometimes just do that thing where the off-screen thing happens and you just smile at the players and they're like waiting and you're like Oh, something happened. Never mind. Yeah. Something you're, like you're that. You're fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you're just, fine. Just make a mark on your paper. Yeah. Or, or you, you look at him and you're like, oh, did you think something was going to happen right now? <laughs> That's good. I, I know that you guys have cursed me when I've done that. I know I've cursed you when you've done it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So let's, um, let's, well, let's do some failure. Let's do the thing. Yeah, let's do some failure. Right. I, I will set the scene. Give me a scene. Okay, here we go. We're uh, Hydra Hackers. We're going to play Hydra Hackers. Um, Chris, um, I'll be the GM. I had this written the other way around, but since you uh, actually filled in a whole bunch of this, um, I am the GM, and you are going to play Colonel Panic. Okay. The hacker. Um, you are in the server room of the water of, of a water authority switching station, and um, you are trying to hack the drone network to let your team escape the facility, and you fail the hack. Yes, okay? I do. Uh-huh. I think I set this up backwards. You did. You did. You me. Read. I asked you to, to, to make the you hack. You did. Like you reversed the whole thing, but that's all right. You let's, let's do it. I'll, I'll name the condition that you, um, uh, you, you tell me what happened. Sure. Uh, let's do failure, but okay. Failure, but you don't hack the drone, but you do manage to unlock the doors to get your team out. They just have to get by the drone before the hack is discovered and overridden. Nice failure. And so, uh, can somebody, can you go back? I, I want to know. Um, I, I want to reinforce what these actually mean. Okay. Because I, I oh. had a hard time remembering them. Oh, okay. here they are. Failure and. So this, it didn't work and something else happens. So failure and with, it didn't work and something else happens. Um, where is it? You don't hack the drone and some program is starting up and you have no idea what it does or will do once it's done booting up. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, failure. So. So failure. So is it didn't work and there's some long term consequence. You don't hack the drone and the GM looks at you and says, uh, that's all. Nothing actually happened. And what actually happened is some ice got in your system that will track you back to your layer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, failure or. So failure or is it didn't work and there's some option for what else could go wrong. And in this, it is, uh, you do hack the drone. Uh, oh, you do hack the drone, but you alert everyone else in the building to your team's presence. Yeah. Or you don't hack the drone and you alert everyone else in the building to, to their, your team's presence. You can do either way. Yep. Really. Failure as. Uh, so failure as in our, in our thing is it didn't work and something else happens at the same time. This could be neutral not or good as bad. In this case, I said, um, you don't hack the drone and you lock every other door in the facility and the system changes all the access codes that you had. Yeah. That's, so that's all. That, that, that's bad. It's kind of bad. Yeah, it's, it's bad. On the bright side, it locks all the bad guys in their spaces, too. So. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, maybe that works for you. Maybe it doesn't. Because all the access codes changed also. Yes. So until they can... Now now the situation is like, can you get out and hack through the doors and whatnot before the uh, si- the place gets their, gets their uh, system back under control? Yes. So those are the, those are the different ways that that could go down. Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know how much more we need to kind of, uh, hammer on this, right? No, we did a really nice eloquent job of, and quick job, efficient job. There we go. How about we sum it up? Sure. So failure comes in all levels of severity. It can be immediate, intermediate, or indirect. Mm -hmm. GMs have the ability to define failure based on the player's intent. And varying failure keeps the game interesting. Yeah. And remember everybody, failure is shouldn't stop things right right failure that stops the game like literally halts it sucks yeah so fail it with and make it interesting make something happen or fail forward fail fail failure means needs to have something happening yeah the worst one is just fail period yeah and just because they fail you don't always have to use fail forward you cannot give them the thing that they were trying to accomplish but you just need to make something else happen yep all right what's going on in the chat room we having a uh, a good conversation again. I apologize to Ange because when you asked me the first time, I had gotten distracted by the current conversation and whatnot, and I forgot I had put two comments from Ange in the whoa, in the notes whoa. here. Are you saying that you failed too, Bob? I failed too. <laughs> what? Wow, we're all oh, failing. We're really hammering this point wow. home. So, anywho's Ange had two comments. Um, just don't ask for an explanation on every single freaking skill check yes. to the point that it gets pedantic for the player. Yes, absolutely. My problem with GMs asking for too much detail in explaining my actions is that it comes across as they're assuming the incompetence of my character rather than the competence. And that bugs the hell out of me too. Assume that the characters are good at what they do Okay. as a GM. So that always reminds me of that scene in The Gamers. Yeah. Which one? Where, where the thief walks in the hallway and gets hit with a fireball. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did I say I was walking? I meant I was slowly checking for traps. You didn't say that. Yes, but I'm a master thief. I always check for traps. Yeah. That's the, you should make a roll. When you just tell them to make rolls. Don't tell them what for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then if they fail, then they get hit with the fireball and they can't complain. <laughs> yes. Well, do you, do you not remember that scene? I don't remember that scene. It's because he it's rolls every while. time. Yeah. He keeps failing. <laughs> and then finally they're like, Damn it. Who has the most hit points? And the barbarian's like, I do. And then Rogar goes walking down the hall, gets hit with the fireball, and then he's like... He keeps on <laughs> he walking. He keeps walking. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Love that. Good I, times. I just love that uh, uh, thing. That is when I always say, like, you can ask for... Ask, I always, when I'm when I'm running, I, I usually don't ask unless I need clarification because I usually just use the situation at hand. Yeah. Sometimes... I also trick people by saying, can you give me a little fiction? Well, yeah. which is legit for Dungeon World, right? Like, that's completely legit to just say, like... I do you... it for every game. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's fine. Uh, I see there's some people are asking us to fail in other directions. Um, <laughs> so they wanted to, they want us to fail sideways. They want us to fail sideways? Yeah, so failing sideways is um, not only do you not get what you want, but something else unrelated happens. Like, well, that's I fail. failed to pick... But, the, hold I fa- on. No, go ahead. But, but you just said the thing. That's that's a uh, fail, but you get... But, you do, but something else happens? Yeah, right? unrelated. Unrelated. Like... Uh, you fail to pick the lock and the vending machine spits out a can of soda. Oh, oh yeah, sure. That's, okay. yeah. that's fail sideways. Yeah, yeah. fail sideways. Uh, somebody wants a, a fail perpendicular. That's actually when two failures intersect. Ah. So yeah. uh, Bob fails to um, Bob fails to take over the drone network um, and... Oh, and uh, somebody is... Uh, oh, so we're, it's Hydro Hackers, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So somebody is trying to uh, test the water. Yeah. And they fail, and their drone short circuits and fries out, and is stuck in the water. There we go. Yeah. So, so uh, wait a minute, because he's trying to hack the system, right? Yeah. That's those two failures together, because the the shock that goes in the water gets yep. in the system, and that's actually those two failures together. Um, they sh- they they cross because he's trying to hack. Ice gets up, um, shorts out the drone, which then shorts out the water, which backtracks and shorts out his uh deck. Yeah. Cross yep. contamination failure right there. Fail perpendicular. So uh. The, the chat room being smart about that, just, you know. Sure. What else you got? You want us to fail square? Yeah. You want Isos- us to fail triangle? Isosceles triangle? Well, that's isosceles triangle it? Fails par- fail parallel? Uh, that's just two That's just yes. two failures that have nothing to do with each other. Like, <laughs> yeah, right? They just, they they just, just go on and on forever? On and on forever. That's right. Because, you know, the lich lost his phylactery and the vampire, you know, got staked in the heart. I'm going to get, get that lich of phylactery. Yeah, liches love phylacteries. <laughs> liches love phylacteries. <laughs> they got anything else? They want anything I else? I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other thing I think that they're talking about, we'll talk about when we get to, yes. um, 
the podcast. That's exactly what you think it is. Think anything else? No, we're good. I thought Ange had two comments. Failed diagonally. I, I read both of them. Oh, okay. What was the first one? Was the first one about the... the um... It's, it's uh, don't ask me for detail every time, and it makes me feel like you're, you're thinking I'm incompetent rather than competent. No, we've been asked to do fail diagonally. Uh, so that's that's a failure, um, and, but the consequence is just like oh, a I, little off. I, oh, I got it. No, yeah, fail go diagonally. Yeah, yeah, is, got it. it has uh, when you fail diagonally, you fail at what you're trying to do, and the diagonally part is that uh, something else starts happening that's bad that is that is unrelated to what's going oh, on, but oh, then becomes a problem. Oh, me, me, me. Go ahead. Okay, you're hacking the drone network. Uh huh. Um, but you, um, in the failure of your hack, you set off a purge of all the system files and it's now just like erasing everything <laughs> oh, in the system. That's funny. Eventually it's going to erase all the control code. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, it's over here on the side. It wasn't really a thing. And yeah. now it's come creeping towards you because yeah. you're like, but I need the files. <laughs> fail diagonally. Oh, fail in. Aquamage is asking us to fail in. Fail in. So Noah, we, you want us to fail in. Uh, so, oh, I know. That's easy enough. Like you fail to pick the lock yeah. and then you lose your confidence in yourself. Oh, I was just going to do that, right? Like it was just some sort of internal crisis yeah, or something. Yeah. I suck at this. I, I'm I throwing my tools master, away. Yeah. I thought I was a master thief and now I'm not. And then you like. Yeah. You, like you, you completely contemplate your role as a thief as. <laughs> throw you your thief's like tools at the mage and be you, like, you do it. You have an ex- <laughs> And then the mage knocks the door and is like, sure, thief, because it doesn't matter. Why I'm do you need mage. me? Yep. Yeah. Fail in is like you have an existential crisis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You wind up like on an empty plane talking to yourself. Mm-hmm. It's like the, you know what it is? Fail in is like that moment where Scott Pilgrim gets killed. Yes, it's exactly what it right? is. Right? And he's just sitting there in that like desolate space talking to himself. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. There you go. Anywhere where I can make a Scott Pilgrim reference. You've won. Yeah. yeah. You, win, you win the podcast. There today. we go. Good job. Thanks. All right. Are we good? I think <laughs> Let's we're get good. out of there before they pick something else. <laughs> they can pick stuff in the after show. There get, we go. Load them up. All right. So first things first. It's the first weight loss challenge of the new year. Shit, I didn't weigh myself didn't, today. You want to go weigh yourself right now? No, Fail. I really, no, I really. Only, <laughs> I had a salad for dinner. Although I had, just to talk about why I don't want to fail, I don't want to weigh myself. I went to the Expo Market on Main Street. Yeah. You go to get sun? Uh, no. I went to the Italian place. Uh-huh. Ost, what is it? Ostra? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I was going to get like a pizza. And then I got up there and saw all the fresh ingredients <laughs> for the pasta bowl. Huh. And I was like, hold on. Okay. I, I failed at this too. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I, I had this like, amazing uh, pasta bowl of um, um, Italian sausage and um, roasted cloves of garlic. And oh my God, it was so you had ridiculous. Me at pasta. Like, What's that? You had me at pasta. Oh, I had cheese tortellini I added to that. Oh, cheese The, the cheeses? I mean, how could you... I mean, Jesus we, we Christ. Knew, we knew you loved pasta because of the cheeses. So. Oh, yeah. And cheese, apparently. Yeah. Anyway, um, I didn't go to Sun, but the next time I go, uh, I might go to Sun, although there's a new burrito place opening up in the mm, expo. So. Burrito? Anyway, it's on Main Street. It's like just down from... Um, it's just down from Shays. So, Bob. Yeah. Weight loss challenge. What are you at? I started out the year last week with that wonderful 200.2, and I thought to myself, all right, now we got to get back on the train. So I fired up my fitness pal and started counting calories again, Uh huh. and I came in Sunday morning at 197.2. Woot. Three pounds, baby, nice right job. out of the gate. Crushing it. Doing the thing. The old school DM Randy Farmer, he's in again. Uh, this is for six months. Yes, this is for six months. We will end this on... What's the seventh? July first. July first. July first will be the end of this challenge. Starting weight is two fifty two. Up a little bit since Christmas New Year's. His target is two forty. He's raring and ready to go. Uh, he's putting up his horde of the Dragon Queen books once again. Nice. Jared Rasher. Target two hundred. Current two twenty three. Last week two twenty three. Arctic temperatures put the kibosh on my walking, and I couldn't get. Uh, I can't read it because OBS is stupid, and in the way. <laughs> I couldn't get as many steps wa- mall walking between the number of bodies and the number of stores violating my sinuses by pumping cologne into the air near their entrances. Oh, nasty. Oh, that's the worst, that's man. That's terrible. You know, I have a hard time because I have sinus problems, too. Yeah. Like, I don't talk about them very much. Like, um, Bath and Body Works or any candle shop. I have a real hard time. Like, too intense? Yeah, it just it messes my head up so yeah, bad. Yeah, me too. The places where they have, like, all the scents just, oh, 
Oh. Yeah, it just crushes crushes me. I just get real dizzy. Or walking past an Abercrombie and Fitch. That doesn't bother me so much. <laughs> Uh, nice. Chris Shore will weigh in the evening and will review my stash to see what I can put up for stakes this time. Casey McKenzie, starting weight, 218. Goal, less than 200. You can do that. I know you can do that. David Walker. Hello, friends. I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody can do this year. I am glad to see returning faces and hope we can draw in some new people. His goal weight is 178. Ooh. He, he put down 178. His starting weight is 194. That's like ninth grade for me. <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I was in high school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I weighed 169 in high school. Okay, after shaking off the rest of the holidays, I am moving in the right direction again. Put up a big drop this week. Three pounds already. Nice. Yeah. Uh, 178 is an important number for me. It was my weight when my son got sick. I fell off hard. It took me years to get right again. He's doing well, but all my kids deserve a dad who'll be around for a long time. Nice. Thanks yeah. to everyone for the support. We're going to crush it this year. Yes, we are. Yeah, we are. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back on this. My starting weight is 267. I am going to do my best to get down to 247. I'm going to clock back in, but um, I know where I was like two weeks ago, so I just have to quick. I just have to do a quick weigh in. Uh huh. Um, I, I'm telling you, my secret weapon for this uh, for this six months is if I have to eat out, Panera. Panera. I mean, just stay away from the confectionery stuff, but the rest of it, you got a lot of options. Like good calorie counts in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sean Nicholson, his current is 183. He is looking to get to 175. That is a very, very doable thing. I know you can do that. Yep. All right. Let's talk about some Kickstarters. It's about to be the season because... It is the season. Why Why is it the season? Go ahead and explain. Because why. the fiscal year is over. Right. <laughs> and nobody can get taxed on income. Correct. So you do your Kickstarter now... Or February. Or February, and you have all year to spend the money before it becomes taxable. Correct. Unless you do that thing that uh, I read about on the IGDN, but you got to get your accountant... To do that To thing. actually rig you up so that it doesn't count. That makes sense. But it's tricky. So... Uh, yes, um, that's why you don't see a lot of Kickstarters at the end of the year, because no one wants to carry the money over for tax purposes. Yep. Okay, so it is almost the season. What do we got? So the first thing is a comic book or a, t- co- yeah, a comic book capturing the humor with some of your best RPG gaming or geek moments while at the table with your party. It's called Life of the Party, the realities of an rpg Uh If you would think of what Calvin and Hobbes would look like if drawn as a series of RPG like one panel comics. Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's what this is. Okay. And you can go to um, I will have a link in the show notes for the actual website where these are popping up before they are going uh, to be compiled because this is a web comic. This person is a web comic artist. Uh, I forget the name. I, it's Travis. Oh, they're great. Hansen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at it right now. It's, I mean, he's an Eisner winner. Like he can draw. Like he's yeah, very, Eisner winner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like that is that is the thing. Uh, it's already funded. It funded like. Oh, it's like double. Five hours. It's, it's double. Yeah, I mean, this guy is, yeah. you know, he's legit, like, real pro. Yeah, it's good stuff. So that's, uh, they're hilarious. I've, I've read a bunch of them. I suggest taking a look. Yep, I like it. The other one is a Kickstarter called Pig Smoke, a role-playing game of Sorceress Academia. I'm going to raise my hand here. Yep. What the hell is this name? I don't know. Because because the rest of this description is sounds awesome. awesome. The name literally has me looking the other direction. So first off, we're interested because it's powered by the apocalypse. Second off... We like that. Yeah, we like that. Second off, you were playing teachers, the professors, at a sorceress academy that is collegiate. So it's college. So you know what it reminds me of? Hmm. You know that LARP? The one that takes place uh, like in that Magic cast- school. Yes. Like, it kind of reminds me like that. Yeah. Yeah, a little, a little of that. Which means awesome. So you were actually... There are apparently mechanics in this game for... Uh, like you have to do like research and things like that, which then has the calendar moving along. Like I assume like it, it is moved forward, but then there are moments where you're trying to keep your kids from getting killed because you are basically Snape and sure. Uh, the werewolf guy, Lucius, not, not, not Lucius. Um, uh, Lupin. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Lupin. Dumbledore. Well, people every, like that. Well, every, you know, every terrible, um, professor of, uh, what was it? Defense of the Dark Defense Arts. of the Dark Arts for every year since, uh, Seriously, you know that school's never been audited. No. Yeah. Like, no. if they audit it, they'd be like, what the hell is wrong with this class? Really? Do you think they audit magical schools? I they feel are, like they don't audit magical schools. I feel, like they, I feel like there's no safety protections in that school. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, right. good stuff. So, uh, let's move on to some community chatter. Fandible, they had an AP of Rocker Boys and Come Vending Machines. On. Yes. Apparently, they were very drunk while playing it. I haven't uh, listened to it yet. I think it enhanced. I listened... I listened to it. It is kind of, it is pretty funny. Um, 
And uh, in, you know, no way does drinking slow that game down. No, not at all, man. So uh, it was good. I think um, I'm trying to remember. One of them was like Chrome Samurai. Nice. And I, and nice. I think the other one was a vending machine, like a bur- had like a burrito. Vending yeah, machine. that's awesome. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Love it. I, I assume you listened to it because, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you did write I the not? game. I, and I think John Arcadian, John Arcadian was the one who put a, a laminated copy of the game in their hands. Yeah. 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 He, he saw him at a catacomb. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Jared Rasher, he uh, it was about giving feedback. It was a topic for chatter. So this is what he said. He had an unexperienced tonight. Played in a Monster of the Week game for the first time as opposed to running the game. And I had a lot of fun. However, when we were all getting ready to leave, the person running the game asked me how I thought he'd done. I responded with a vague, I really enjoyed the game. I had a lot of fun. All of which was true. That said, what I also thought but didn't say was, you're still holding on to a little bit too much narrative control and you structured it a bit too much like a standard RPG adventure. It was by no means a railroad or anything, just not as fluid as the game might be. You were also a little bit too worried about keeping the actions of the characters even instead of the spotlight time for the players. If someone can explain a relatively complex action when they have the mic, and someone else just wants to pull out a gun and shoot something, as long as the players are getting equal time, you don't need to balance out every perceived second that the characters are acting out. Uh, you did a much better job than I do when it comes to framing things like a TV show with opening scenes, establishing shots, and scene transitions. So I just wanted to say that because the next thing that he says is, in other words, I thought he did a good job, but held on a little bit too much baggage for more traditional games to get the full effect of the rules. Still a very positive experience. But I didn't say any of that for two reasons. One, I was afraid he wouldn't take the criticism as it was meant, that he did a good job and ran a very enjoyable game, but he had some room for things he could improve. And two, who the heck am I to tell him how to GM a Powered by the Apocalypse game? I could be terrible and totally missing the point of these things and just have people that are relatively kind and under, uh, under demanding of my meager, or undemanding of my meager abilities. May just I? an odd oh. thought at the end of a pretty good night of gaming. May I? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so first of all, one, um, totally get why you might be hesitant to give feedback. Yeah. Uh, especially if you don't know how the person's going to take it. True. Um, but, and I can say this clearly for Powered by the Apocalypse games, and it does not apply to other games. Powered by the Apocalypse is very prescriptive in what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So there is actually, and I, I, I shudder to use this, but there is a correct way to play a Powered by the Apocalypse game. Uh, there absolutely is. There's actually a correct way to play pretty much every game. Yeah, but I'm saying like, in terms of the moves you make as a GM, like they're very prescribed. And if you follow those principles, agenda and moves, Mm -hmm. um, it should generate a certain feel. Yes. Um, That's what the mechanics do in other games too. Right. And I will say this, um, because I don't know anything about this GM. I don't know their history, but I I will say this, that um, if you have been playing a lot of traditional games, uh, switching to a powered by the apocalypse game does take a little um, getting used to getting your sea legs. I guess I could couch it by saying it's not, a correct way, but it's an intended way. Fair. There's an intended way to play power. Vincent would say correct. Vincent would, because Vincent would take a harder line. than Yeah. I Vincent would. would take the hard line and tell you there is a correct way to play apocalypse. Uh, I love Vincent, but he's not always right. No, but I love Vincent. So, but anyway, the idea is that there, it like it is, um, you aren't really supposed to hang on to as much, um, as much of the game as, as I, I think people who've come into it the first time. I had a lot of, I had a lot of struggles. I mean, dangerous space jail is well, you, you is my transition whole, period. You wrote a whole adventure to, so you could figure out how to play that kind of game. Well, it took me a whole adventure to go from very structured to very let, like to let it go. Yeah, it's because you're such a free spirit. <laughs> Has that gone out on Patreon? No, not yet. Well, I, then I won't rage. When like, somebody gives me the... Um, audio? Yeah. Somebody who's sitting in the chat room? Yeah, somebody can give me that and I'll just put it up. Or yes. actually, she, she could just go put it up herself. Uh, yes. Oh, I think the other person has. Oh, them. And she's Who's in the also chat in the chat room. Oh, well, she can't. Nikki. <laughs> yes. Nikki or Senda, one of them or both of them have the infamous I am a free, free spirit. spirit. So yeah. I've completely derailed this with free spirits. So what were we talking about? Um, oh, yeah. Giving constructive feedback. Yeah. Well, um, we should just put a pin in it. We don't need to. Well, we could. But Pandas actually just talked about postgame debriefs. Oh, that's right. You did. Um, but one of the things we said in that episode was that um, as a GM, you need to be willing to take that feedback. And if you don't know if that GM can, doing it at the table may have like a really negative reaction. Doing it privately, like sending an email or chatting up because you're friends Mm -hmm. later, 
might be a good way to do it. The other way you could do it is um, instead of saying like you're doing it wrong kind of thing is that in the next game before the GM takes like a certain move, like, you know, wholly like holding on to the narrative to interject and be like, oh, oh, I have an idea. Can I can I throw it in? Yeah. You know, and and model the like model that behavior. Correct. Yeah. That's all I was going to say. Mm hmm. Uh, a lot of people commented on this. I would suggest going to the G plus community if you're interested in uh, seeing what the comments are. Um, I come from a, uh, like you come from a science background. I come from a writing background. I've been criticized a lot. Bob comes from a land down under. <laughs> no. Is he sleeping? You got nothing on that? Nothing. I, nothing? I was trying to think why you would go with that. That just. Men at work? I know it's men at work, but I'm not Australian, so there. Yeah. Right. That's, I mean, we have some listeners from. Uh, yeah, they, we absolutely do. We absolutely we have do. some Australian listeners. Yes, we do. You could have gone with, you could have just rolled with I could have rolled with that, but you know what? You I failed. failed. You failed. <laughs> failed your the theme, joke. Theme for the evening. Damn it. So, yeah, uh, I, uh, I actually, I don't know. Giving criticism is hard. Like, figuring out how to do it. I would always suggest uh, give, give. For every negative, give two positive, maybe three. Roses and thorn. Roses and yep. thorns is a good way to do it. Uh, Introducing that idea. Here's a tip. Uh, don't do what younger Chris did as a critique of somebody's game. No. Uh, which is get up and leave. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, older. I, I, I was scared oh. to GM for you the first couple times because I was like, he's going to fucking get up and leave older, in the middle of older my game. Older Chris would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you have a criticism... I always find it good to give a couple of things that you think would at least help fix that thing. Oh, absolutely. Criticism with a suggestion. Yeah. Don't be like, uh, Hey, um, you're holding on to that narrative too hard. And here's how I would suggest. Yes. <laughs> letting go of it. Yeah. And, and tone I, is, is a good thing too, uh -huh. because the way you say it can be just as important. Tone is important and avoiding inflammatory language. Yep. Like don't, give don't say things like because you're a really hard-ass traditional gm like you're holding on to that narrative too hard yeah. yeah that's accusatory because what i'm hearing is the first part yep what i'm not hearing is the second part. you're also saying that you have a bias against people who are traditional gm right and at that moment i'm now on the defensive right because it's like well what's it, wrong it with does, me it does two things actually it puts um that person on the defensive that you're giving criticism and it also invalidates you because you're just presenting an opinion yeah which these are all technically opinions, but there are good opinions and bad opinions. When mm -hmm. you do it that way, you are actually putting a dividing line like, well, I don't like that kind of game. So it doesn't even matter if what you did was was good or bad. Um, I just didn't enjoy the thing that you were doing because I don't like that kind of thing. So sometimes I turn that on myself. So what I will do is I'll say something like, um, hey, good game tonight. You know what would be really fun for me? Mm -hmm. Would well, be that, like if you would if you would let like if you would source the table and let like me or somebody else. Uh, pick one of those results. So that example right there is great because you're like, that was a really good game. There are a few things that would make it better for me. Yeah, for me. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not saying, like, your game's bad and this is how you make it better. Correct. I just, I, I, I direct it right onto myself. Because yep. these things are collaborative exercises and everybody should be working to make sure everybody else is good. Yeah. There's another thing that you can do, too, after you give criticism. You can actually ask the game master, what can I do for you to make the game more enjoyable? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that actually makes it, um, because then, then it's not just you're not just giving criticism. You also ask for criticism. Yes. And that's always in, because that puts you on equal footing. It's not just somebody battering somebody. Yeah. I mean, I think anytime um, you can, you never want, you never want your criticism um, pointed. Yeah. Like it, it needs to, it needs to be, um, it needs to be soft. Uh, but, but candid, mm -hmm. like you can't be like, you have to be candid. You have to say like, if something didn't work, you actually have to say it didn't work. Yeah. But what you don't say is like, well, you really fucked up that scene and the, the way you fucked it up. And like, yeah, you, you should say <laughs> uh, this scene didn't work. And I think for it me, well, you could even say that the scene, yeah. if, if it didn't work actually in the game at all. Right. You can say like this scene didn't work. And I think it didn't work because of these things. I don't think uh, well, I felt they, this. That's that particular scene could have been stronger if I felt I felt as yeah, a good you one. Can yeah. do that. It, if, it, if you want to be softer, it. there there are yeah. times that I don't mind being a little bit harder. You don't have to be harder. Oh, but, no, no. Yeah. But I, I often don't. Like, it, it becomes a misunderstanding of, of the mechanics of the game mm -hmm. that rather than, uh, a, than a, a game master thing. Like, I don't think that scene worked because we didn't play it right because of these things. Because yes. the mechanics weren't engaged in the correct manner. Well, and that's, a, and that's another good one, right? Because then that, what it really is just saying is like, it, it's, it's putting the, it, again, 
well, that turns it from it's somebody's fault to let's figure out what was wrong. Yeah. Because we're now problem solving instead of bl- assigning blame. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for Chris. It, see, it's interesting because um, you and I get this from two different places, right? Yeah. Like your writing background, uh, you all you you all had to um, critique each other's writing. Yeah. So you all learn how not to essentially stab each other while trying to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to frequently deliver uh, bad news to upper management. So um, <laughs> I have to have learned the art of delivering this um, or telling upper management that the thing that they want to do is batshit crazy. Mm-hmm. But I can't use the words batshit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I need to use other language that conveys the um, absurdity of their idea in a way that doesn't make them want to fire me. <laughs> Sorry. It's, a, it's a fantastic job. Fantastic. All right. Are we good? Uh, yeah, that's actually real. That was a great, um, that's a great uh, topic. Yeah. Good job, Bob. Way to pull that one. I was going to pull it. But I I'm looked ready. at the, at the, the list of things that were being discussed and I went, oh, that one's going. That's, mm-hmm. that, that was a must. So. And listen to Panda's Talking Games talking about debriefs because that'll probably also help with that situation. Debriefs. Taking off briefs. Yes. <laughs> There's Next one thing. thing I know about debriefs. Uh, it's taking it's them off. fun when they come off. It's Ben Wilson, our international correspondent. If only, if only we had a, a sound bite. What? Yeah, guess what? I'm going to take that clip, sound bite it, and put it on the soundboard. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. It's exactly what you should do. Pin that, Robert. Pin. Ding. <laughs> uh, worth a share. If you're interested in how to design scenarios for Call of Cthulhu, there are some great guidance in this GM forum uh, from over the weekend. Not just for Call of Cthulhu, but helpful for, helpful for other investigation games. So the team at Into the Darkness held a discussion about scenario writing and invo- invited Mike Mason um, to join them. Wait, wait. Comedian and songwriter Mikey Mason? No, no, no. Oh. Mike Mike Mason. Okay, sorry. From Chaosium. No, no, that's that's... Makes way more sense now yeah. that you say it like that. Uh, they also have Matt Sanderson there from Blasphemous Tomes. And somebody else whose name I can't see because it's behind the play button. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. behind the play button. I'll just hit play and see what it says. Oh, no. because Yeah, there it is. And Oscar Rios from Golden Goblin Press. Oh, okay. Yeah. Plus a bunch of other people. Uh, Thomas McKean, Jeff. Uh, the people from Into the Darkness, I believe. Uh, I started listening to it. It's like two hours long. If, if you have two hours to, sp- to spare. It looked like a good discussion. I listened to the first ten minutes. It was interesting. All right. Well, let's do some Patreon shout outs. Why not? Absolutely. Like oh, idea. Before we Patreon shout out. Sure. What's up? There was a thing in the um, G plus community this morning, I think that you tagged. Um, and, and, and I can only mention it briefly because people need to go see it. That book, the book. Oh, that book, the book. Okay. So th- this guy, it was a guy, right? Um, I, if I'm I remember, sure it was a guy. Okay. This guy made, made a tome for his players for the campaign it's not a little book it's no it's no. it's several inches thick it's like the necronomicon thick book and it's watercolor i mean it's thick paper but it's with these watercolor pictures and and ink maps and and it's oh my god it it's, is like the most epic table prop i have epic ever seen table prop yes it is yes now yes uh now let me say two things first of all if I created that book as the GM and put it on the table, uh-huh. we are playing a two fucking year long campaign. <laughs> yeah. right? There's there's no seeing any other games. There's no switching. Yeah, you know, the four four game rule, the four session rule. I'm not really Out. feeling it. Um, you can leave them. We'll replace you. At that right. point. Yeah. Three months it took him to construct this book. I'm telling you, if I put that book on the table, you are playing yeah. the whole damn campaign. I don't care if it's terrible. How could you not want to? Oh like, my God. There are and foreign languages in there that you have to decipher. There are maps and puzzles and maps and that you have to figure out. He took a, an chamois. old chamois from a car yeah. uh, for washing cars and made a map on the chamois. So it was like and, parchment. And stuck it in. It was like, it was like leather. Yeah. Like leather. Okay. And there's a section in the back that's sealed. It's wrapped in a yep. binding with yep. a wax seal on it. And, it's, and there's a note that, it's written in the hand of the the NPC that wrote the book that says don't open this essentially oh my because God. you can't handle it right now and yeah. oh it's crazy so, so all I'm saying is like he he took a he took pictures of all the pages there's like he thirty could. pictures it's, of it it is incredible go to the G plus site I can't say enough nice things about this thing if I sat down at a table and a GM was like okay for our campaign this this go around. And like put this out on the table, I would lose my mind. Yeah, Ben Wilson made fun of me. He's like, that seems about the amount of effort that Chris puts into his GM prep. Right. 
Chris this is me shaking my head. Chris, no, you, you drop that for one of our games coming up, and I'm going to be sitting here going. <laughs> I mean, I, that's a marriage. Like, <laughs> that book is that book's like a fucking wedding ring for a with campaign. this book, Ivy Wed. Right. With this book, we will be playing for a long time. Until all this material is done. Hey, look, I got something to do next time. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you really, don't. Really don't. <laughs> no, nope. you don't. Okay. Anyway, yes. I just I wanted to mention it because it's so mind blowingly beautiful. It is. I think we need a link in the show notes. Yeah. G Pin ding. G plus community. Check it out. Or if you're part of gaming and BSS G plus community. All right. Sorry. Got all ex- got all excited on that one. Sorry. Well, let's, let's do some Patreon shout outs. Why don't you start? Shout out Matt Sharp. Woo. Joe Papa Schwick. Papa Schwick. Go ahead, Bob. I'm not oh, in the he's game not in there. show notes. Sorry, he, he actually. Oh, I'm by the pinging way, something. Jesse, pinging something. Jesse Emmett, but real quick, Joe Schwick. One of my favorite moments of uh, 2016. <laughs> Getting Mister, drunk on Papa Schwick's misdirected Mark Stout. Oh, oh my god! Or we, Mike drop. We Mike Stout. drop. We Dude, Stout. I think there's a bottle in the fridge. <gasps> I don't have any what? more. No, I think there's a bottle in my fridge. Uh, we should drink it some point. We at should some point. Maybe at 250. By the way, by the way, it was Papa Schwick. Yeah, that is like the stout that got me drinking stouts. Yeah, there you go. Do you, you know what I remember about that that was really funny hmm. was you started drinking the one bottle and then like <laughs> you got like a little mucked up. So you put it down and I, I ran out of water. So I just drank the rest of that bottle. And then the next hour of the talk, you open another bottle and do the same thing. And then you put it down. Made and I, Phil grabbed it and finished it. <laughs> he was hammered that day. Yeah, we were both pretty hammered <laughs> We were that both day. a little messy by the time we got to the bar. Yeah. It was awesome. Thanks, Papa Schwick. Uh, Jesse Edmund. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you so much. Yeah. Um, go ahead. That was, I did Jesse. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. that's right. You did. We should have Jesse on the show sometime. Okay. I mean, he's just up the road. If only really? we could have guests. Oh, oh. He lives in Rochester. Oh, well, never mind. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on other streams. Yes. We okay. should play that sometime, too. On my bookshelf upstairs to be read. Is it is it any good still? Or do you not read it yet? I started flipping through it. Here's what I remember. Um, the typography is awful. <laughs> like, the typography is like a typewriter. Um, the layout is... Um, Atrocious. It's not good, um, but it is chocked full of Eastman and Leard original art. Yeah. So it's like, and and now, I think the this age. Was, let me let me do this because I think I'm right. Can I say this was in the day when comic books weren't really uh, well thought of? So it was probably a lot cheaper to get that licensing deal. Yes. Um, age wise, my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle experience is the comic books, the uh-huh. murderous. Yeah. Blood gore comic books. Everyone of, wearing the red bandanas or the right. red eye bandanas. Yeah. The cartoon. The abomination. That's my turtles. Yes. That's, that's your, your turtles. turtles. I love those that's, turtles. That's what I was trying to get to. When I was that's a three, by the way, that you put that. I know. It's, uh, it's sticking I'm, right in your chest. I know. <laughs> it's in the way of, I'm talking about I can't, I can't do it. Cough, palladium cough. <laughs> <laughs> when, um, when the cartoon came out, I was like a teenager and I was like, oh, my God, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the cartoon. I love this comic book. I like got up. I jump in front of the TV with like a bowl of cereal and like three minutes in. I'm like, what the F is this? <laughs> Cow a what? Cow a bung. Right. Like they're eating pizza. I'm like, what is this crap? Like, where is the shredder murdering people? Like, yeah. So I had a very bad. Sorry, reaction. bro. Yeah, sorry, that suddenly was not my turtles. Mirko Froilich. Thank you so much for being a patron, Mr. Yeah. Productions. And Ben Wilson. Our international correspondent. Thank you so much for being a patron of Mr. Director Mark Productions. We appreciate it. Do you know what's one of my favorite patron names to say? What's that? Chris Steele. Chris Steele. Yeah, it's good. Sorry. So now we will move on to this. This is the podcast super friends oh ooh, ooh, i can do the first one okay go ahead um panda's talking games <gasps> we did post game debriefs neat and talked about the um uh reasons you might want to do one for a uh one shot and uh the many reasons why you probably would do it for a campaign mm. um and um uh, we had some fun it was um our normal silliness yep and i believe patron backers got the extra silliness yes they yeah. did and i didn't even have to do it because uh Nope. Send it. Send nope. it can load Send it up now. A, send it was all over. It's very exciting when I don't have to do work. She had a super productive weekend. She um, she recorded. We re, we both because I was there. We recorded uh, pandas talking games and she's a super she's geek. A super geek. She knocked out um, pandas on Saturday, uh-huh. and then knocked out. She's a super geek on Sunday, uh-huh. um, and had and did not have to like rush and be crazy on Monday. Nice. Yeah, she really killed it. She did a good job. 
so down with D&D Storm King's Thunder Chapter 4 came out. Yep. Also, for those people who are patrons of uh, anybody who patrons, uh, I think, from $4 and up, over the next uh, three weeks, a couple of uh, little D&D things are coming on the Patreon. I wrote up some stuff for them, so be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Very nice. Sorry. And it was the return of Cindy Moore to the mics. Dun dun dun. Yep, she is. Wait, not dun dun dun. <laughs> not dun dun dun. She's not evil. Did 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 No, that's no wrong. No. Um, we need a happy, joyous noise. Ding. Yeah. Hey. Oh, oh, I hit the uh, mic. I hit the uh, mic. Hands on your head. <laughs> I don't have a sound effect. It's just that. <sighs> I'm just gonna do it whenever you guys ask for a sound effect that I don't have from now on. Uh, not for now on. Yeah. You mean not like the other like hundred times you've done it before? Would you please uh, pin that we need a applause bumper? Or applause sound effect. Except, Ding. except for the applause one, can we just have like the slow clap? No, because the... it takes too long to do the slow, slow clap every single time. I thought we were going to do a slow clap. No, it's mocking, right? Yeah. So it's just you know. Oh, okay. Sure. There's, there's the. Uh... Kind of liking that sound. There it is. Let's except, give him the except, clap. Except, except, man, you need to do it when I don't have your microphone turned all the way up. Sorry. Getting a little. You're, you're probably killing people. Sorry, I'll stop. There, there are people's ears bleeding right uh, now. Sorry, my ears. you'll bump that right. It'll level later. will take care yeah, of that. Yeah, well, not level later because I don't use level later, but my leveling will. Yeah, you'll you can level that back I will up. Chris is the level later. Ish. I am level the level later, right. Mister Level Later. Uh, Avalon episode zero came out on this past Friday, uh, so that taught me and Brett B. We talked about what Avalon is, and we talked about what happened in the <laughs> part of the episode that didn't uh, get recorded so that's there phil is dying over there swallow it he's gonna spit take because because bob almost got I, him i wanted to because he did the shaggy thing yeah yeah he did. Mr. Level eight, uh, <laughs> come uh, on <laughs> it's good oh, uh it's on good. advantage to insight wayne and alex talked about looking forward to 2017 and what they plan on doing yeah mm-hmm. all right now it is time for <laughs> A moment of Gaming and BS, where we talk for a bit about what we liked on the last episode of Gaming and BS. Episode which was 121. Yes. What's in a name? What's in a name? You know, I had a couple, I had, I had some feels about this. Yeah. Right? Like, well, first of all, um, I suck at naming things, so I'm like right there with them. Right. Like I, I totally sympathize. Like picking out names for me is a pain in the ass, which yep. is why I live off of random name generators. Nameless are my friend. Um, but silly Silly names in in the games totally bugged the shit out of me. Yeah, I am not a huge fan of them either. Yeah, it happened once in a game that Bob and I were in. I'm also like really keen, especially when somebody names somebody something like, "Oh, what's their name?" and somebody gives something like, something a stupid name. I'm like, okay. And then they end up being terrible for them later. Right. Like, yeah. they're just, like, the worst thing ever. And when they're getting their ass kicked by Joe Schmo the Clown Man. Well, you know, it's always like, well, what's their name? Bob. Yeah. Except that we already have Bob. Yeah. yeah. Fred. Right. Oh, a guy's not going to be named Fred. Come right. on. Right, it's a Use fantasy your imagination. Game. Like, I, all right, so that's one. That's it's like, an elf named Fred. Right. You know? Like, that annoys the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, Doug, that's one of those big pet peeves. Doug Smith. I'm like, come on, you could do better than that. Right. Um, so I don't like that. Um, I don't like I don't like play on word names at all. Really? They're oh, my God. favorite. No, I mean in a game. Yeah. No, because I run because all all the shit I run is dark and mean. Like you can't you know, <laughs> like you can't be using dark and mean. You know what my favorite tricks for naming things is? What's that? I will go to Google uh, Translate. Yeah. I will uh, pick out a word that is close to the oh. the, the function of the character. Yes. I will translate it into a different language. There you and go. I will use that or something close to that as the name of the character. That. I like quite a bit. That's kind of clever. It's really yeah. a play on words. Yeah. No, no. That's not the play on words I'm talking about. That's oh. actually really smart because the word that you come up with, unless somebody's familiar with that language, um, isn't going to be blatantly obvious. Yeah. And But yet it has meaning. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, once you key into that word, you kind of remember. Where like, the hell is that coming from? Well, it wasn't me. It's got to be my other iPad. Sorry, everybody, if you're hearing that. Is there a ding? Yeah, I keep hearing it. It's I only of, heard it's, it once. It's, it's, it's over there. Don't worry about it. Keep, keep okay. moving on. Sorry. Anyway, I shouldn't um, stop the show. It's just the fifth time I've heard it. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's, it's what, what's, what's that noise? What's that noise? Anyway, yeah. I, so names is like a thing for Failing me. Like everywhere. No names that break up the... No anachronistic names. Sure. Don't yeah. do that. I can I can dig that. But I do like... If somebody does have an anachronistic name, then they have a meaning. But I'm okay with something. Like, if you're going to do a fantasy world and the humans have, like, like our kinds of names, uh-huh. 
just do that from the beginning. Yeah. So I got one for you that's actually not bad. Yeah. And, and this is uh, from that thing before about anachronistic names. In the in the Shadowrun games, the video games, there's a guy named Harlequin. Oh uh, yes. Who looks like a Harlequin? Yes. Except he's not anachronistic. He's scary. Yeah. He owns that. Yeah. yeah. And frightening as shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes sense. All murder right. clown. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Continue forward. Fucking murder murder clown. clown. Murder clown. Um, okay. Uh, episode one twenty two. I did not listen to it yet. I, I haven't listened to it yet either. I just want to mention it. Can I, I'm going to give you? Can I? I'll, I'll wait till next week. I'll give my weather tip. Yeah, next they week. talk about the weather. I so have I have a weather tip. You get in there, listen to it. Um, get in I mean, there, muck it up. I haven't listened to what's in the name yet either. It's queued up. Oh, I, I did listen to what's in the name. It was was good. it good? Was there anything interesting there? The name thing. So they talk about uh, for a little while. They talk about you know any names, anachronistic names, things like that. Um, the other part they talk about is um, they get into a thing like where um, they talk about how uh, games sometimes feel the need to rename the game master role. Yeah. You know, storyteller keeper. I um, actually like that. DM. Uh, yeah, I as I like it as long as that name um, infers kind of how the GM's role should be. Yeah. Like storyteller was a very deliberate, uh, you know, and they talk about this in the show. Storyteller is a very deliberate um, move by White Wolf. Because mm -hmm. what are you supposed to be doing? What's the role of that person in the game? It's story. Stories, right. It puts yeah. story right in their name. Um. So I do like it. I don't like it when it's um, I don't like it when it's done for no reason. Me neither. Like you don't need to change it. You can just call it Game Master. Like for instance, the um, I think it's the original Marvel superheroes, the face rip system. The GM is Judge. Yeah. Why? No reason. Yeah. Judge. Editor in chief, on the other hand, means something. Editor in chief would have been more kick ass. Yeah. Except that's what they named the. Game oh wait, Master maybe it was World's in, in Peril. Chief. Oh, that's what they named it in Worlds in Peril. Yep. Smart. smart. Very smart. Yeah. Okay. Because it's themey. Because right? it's, yeah. it's... reinforces the, the it, theme of the game. You're, you're running Vampire 54 in the chat room said, uh, Deadland, Deadlands called directed Mark World Scramble. Yeah. Deadlands called the, word, the Marshall. Yeah. That was good yep, Marshall. Yeah, good. Because it, it helps reinforce the game, uh, the theme and the, 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 the yeah. tone of the game. I mean, Vincent Baker is very deliberate in Apocalypse World. Master of Ceremonies. Master of Ceremonies. It's makes, the closest thing that I've seen to somebody calling the game master a facilitator. Right. And, and, and ceremony is not a trivial. Um, no. Correct. Cause the game is, Oh, and what is it? There should the be a game that calls it the facilitator. Oh, in swords, facility. it's the over player. Yes. Yeah. Because they're a player too. Yeah. The over player. Yeah. But they oversee what's going on. Oh, where Gator says in Bluebeard's Bride, it's the groundskeeper. Which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very still good creepy. though. Yep, Just still this, creepy. Yeah. yeah. I like facilitator is a good, uh, like generic facilitator kind of. is I, I call game masters facilitators a lot. Yeah. I mean, there is also the referee or the judge because that actually matters in some games because that's what the, the game master is supposed to do. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next thing, which is this. Senda has a secret. Senda has a secret. The sky is gray and we are distressed. Mm. It's a game by Josh Jordan. It's um, it's a fantastic little game. There's um, not Senda. I'm sorry. Meg has a secret. Meg is the character's yeah. name. Yeah. Meg has a secret. Um, it is a fantastic little game. It's more LARPy yeah. than anything else. Um, so I couldn't figure out how the game worked. All I could figure out was that ah, there are questions that get asked, or you have to work them in. There's two scripts. Okay. Um, there's two scripts, but I'll tell you what happened. Sure. Okay. So I'll give you I'll give you the behind the scenes on this. So first thing, um, we're recording this, it's pretty late at night. Um, the game itself is actually fairly, in, I mean, it's fairly intense. If you heard the recording, it's fairly intense. But we chose to use the Gonzo table of secrets and not the real table of secrets. Did you have a secret too? I did. But, um, I did, but in true improv style, um, we were going so well in one direction that I didn't want to jar the game by trying to ham fist. And I mean, I think I could have done it subtly, but to try to put mine into the game. What was yours? There are six bodies buried in the basement and I'm responsible for them. Oh, man. but, but as you see the game unfold, it's really clear where it's going and it's going really yeah. hard in that direction. Uh -huh. And so we just, um, how, how great would it have been if, if the twist when you revealed your secret was the thing that never mind, I can't say it. Yeah. I'm spoil the game. Yeah. Don't spoil. Yeah. Don't spoil. Makes, but it, 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 there's never a point where it was like, 
I was starting to like move in on it. And then I was like, no, like I could see we, I, I could see where the story was like both of us could see where that story was heading. Uh-huh. And it was like, all right, let's just let's just play right like as hard as we can into the direction it's going. All right. Now, the actual game mechanics are very little. Um, you roll on a table to pick your thing. Uh-huh. OK. And then uh, there's two scripts. So Frank has a script. And Meg has a script and it tells you like Frank starts reading. Then you look away. That's the mechanic. Like you look away and then that's Meg's prompt to read her part. Uh huh. We did that for probably two thirds of the script. And then again, in total improv, um, just um, kept pushing uh, where the story was going. Like we saw it unfolding and we were like, uh, we, you know, we're like, let's just keep going at, at that. I haven't finished the episode yet. Uh, so I, I won't I will, tell you what happens. Yeah, I will end. later. Um, I will say this. Um, I will say two things about it. People have said um, it's it, it's very enjoyable. And they said it's really intense. It is really intense. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. And I'm super glad we did the Gonzo one as opposed to the real one. The real one. <laughs> like. Some of the real ones, like I went because I purposely when I bought the game, I never looked at the real table because I never wanted to be able to guess. Mm -hmm. And luckily, some of the things I thought would be on the real table were not like oh, that's good. terminal illness. Um, but Ooh. and some of the other ones, I mean, some of them are hard. And then some of the other ones I looked at, and I was like, oh, if that had actually come up in like in play not so bad, like I we could have totally played that. But I mean, that was my fear. Like, like one of these would be like, you know, um, just a land like a trigger landmine yeah, yeah so we were like oh let's do gonzo because it's she's a super geek mm -hmm. and then even then we just went like super like super intense yeah yeah you did so but it was a lot it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. um we, i think we both had a good time we both had a good time recording it and then we both had to afterwards like hang out a little on the mics i mean it was like three something in the morning um by the time it got done but like it was still like a few minutes of, all right, like, whew, like time for uh, after game debrief. Yeah. Like, whew, all right, take a breath, shake it off. Like we're good. I know those games. I played underground for a while. Yeah. <laughs> well, similar to our underground game, the same thing happened when we were playing uh, and Senda edited laughing. it, but there are moments where we like one of us busts out laughing. Cause it's just so bad. The tense is like, it's so tense that like one of us had to start laughing and break the tension. And then we like collect ourselves and be like, okay, you, you know, you know where we're going. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go. It sounds, it sounds like two people who are having a very hard time with their relationship. It's really like, it's super, um, it was, it was, it was cool to just kind of kick into, um, not having to worry about dice or anything on the table and just role play. Mm -hmm. I kind of think I might like LARP more than I, um, than you realize. I think I, I think I actually would. Um, I just, I, you know what? I need like a LARP Sherpa. You do. I need like somebody who will take me to a convention and be like, Phil, I'm going to take you to a few LARPs. I'm going to take you to a few LARPs that are good starters. Oh, there you go. You know what I mean? Like, like starter LARPs that you'll like, you can really sink your teeth into. community. Oh, somebody help Phil community. I'm, I'm going to dreamation. So if that's a thing at dreamation and I kind of think there might be, please, please help me. Mm, there you go. Okay. Anyway. Um, anyway, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. All right, two Nikki more things before you. we get out of here. Hmm? Nikki will help you. Thank you, Nikki. Nice. Uh, two more things before we get out of here. Talking yes. Tabletop, they had another episode of Satanic Panic, the ninth. It's called Georgia. I just started listening to it. It's pretty great. And then uh, I haven't listened to this yet, but the One, one Shot podcast, they're playing Mass. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I, I'm almost afraid to listen to it because of how bad I want to play that game. Yeah. <laughs> As in, Chris, look at me. When we're done with Fall of Magic... But that's not the right group to play. No. Nah. Uh, what do you want? It's not the wrong group either. Anyway, I suppose we could play masks. I mean, Bob would be fine. I don't know if Nikki's uh, into the superhero thing. I know she likes the flash and things like that, but I'm not sure if that's the kind of game uh, she right. wants to play. It's, it's legit. It's legit. OK. OK. But we'll talk about it because I was eyeing up for, for real Urban Shadows. Oh, never mind. I'll play Urban Shadows. Thank you. Right. Oh, and Ange could always run masks for me. She can. In fact, she's going to run it for me because we're going to do a uh, comic strip AP of it. Nice. I don't know if it's going to be on the gauntlet, but it'll be somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right. By the way, after that, then I can actually run masks. So we'll see. Anything going on in the chat room for life? 
Um, I think we can go. I think we're good. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Yes. Phil, thank if you, you so would much. like now say your next thing. Uh huh. And you, as you fail some more. If you're free on if you're free on Tuesday evenings <laughs> at eight forty five Eastern, six forty five PM I'm, the Queen's time. I'm come, laughing because he lowered the pop screen. Come join us live on Twitch where you can chat with other listeners in our awesome chat room for life which and I, ask us questions. Which actually changed the tenor of your voice. So that means the thing is actually uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. If you cannot make it to the live show, check out our podcast each week, wherever you get your podcasts and take a listen to some of the other shows in the misdirected Martin network, such as down with D and D threats from Gallifrey advantage to insight pandas, talking games, cypher speak with Darcy and Troy, the gnome cast and the streets of Avalon. You can and should also come check out some of our brother and sister podcasts. She's a super geek talking tabletop nights of the night, the Orpheus protocol and the always amazing gaming MBS. By the way, I listen to the Orpheus protocol. It's very good. Then, if you want to uh, fail at leaving us some feedback, uh, you can reach us and fail on so many different platforms. Uh, reach out to Chris uh, uh, at Mr. at Chris at Mr. Mark. That's me. That's me. Phil at Mr. Mark dot com. That's him. Bob at Mr. Mark dot com. Should be sending him email. At this I point? haven't gotten one no. piece of email. Hey, I don't know what's up hey, with that. Hey, chat room. If all of you would just send a message to Bob at Mr. Mark dot com right now, we could test out his email. Yeah, we'll find out if that works. Check out our Facebook group. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, the Our generic Twitter handle is uh, at Misdirected Mark. That's true. Uh, but you can find me at DNA Phil. Uh-huh. Robert M. Everson. And The Light 101. Where you hear more than just PMJ stuff now. Yes. Because I actually talked Kind of woke that Twitter thing up. A little bit, a little bit. Yes. Did you mention the... Uh... Oh, and of course, go to the singularity that makes up our <laughs> social media continuum. Where we never fail. Where we never fail in the G Plus community. Hmm. Yeah. If you like what we do here and on the other shows in the Mr. Richter Martin Network, especially down with D&D and Pandas Talking Games, you can support our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash MMP. Patrons get access to the after show, pre-production show notes, musical parodies, Pandas Talking Game bonus outtakes, and often now, because they're all scheduled, some D&D stuff that is coming out for 5th edition for you, just Sweet. for you folks. Rock and Roll Play Baby is by Karen Strange on the album Adamantine Heart, which you can find by clicking on the link in the show notes. You know, I feel like you haven't had to say that in like a, a month. A little or, bit. Or a long, long time, which is why there is that really awkward pause. Right. Thanks. Yeah. This has been a Misdirected Mark production, the media arm of Encoded Designs. Mutra. We out.